So I'm with Kevin Hewitt, the founder of Zone at Dome. Can you just tell us a little bit of background about how you, we've ended up here today with the launch of Zone Dome? Yeah, well, welcome. Um, we, uh, the idea came a couple of years ago. I started doing some marathon running. Uh, everyone told me I was overweight and I'm going to die, so I started running. And um, really just uh, with a technology background that I've had in the software um, business, uh, just thought more could be done to make indoor running in particular enjoyable and motivating again and so when we started looking at the available technologies and who was doing what we um, we discovered that we could kind of repurpose technology that was really the domain of, kind of specialist, specialist military forces in fact and sort of scientific labs and um, kind of commercialize them and productize them to to create what has become zoned um, and um, and film some of the most beautiful places in inspirational places in the world um, and sort of share those so that you, wherever you are in the world, in a gym, in a basement, well actually you could be running along a beach in Australia or the plains of Africa uh, or the wilds of the American West. Um, and that sounds like a simple mission but it's taken us two and a half years. I was going to say, taking it from an initial concept, we talked off camera before and you said you had this idea when you were, I think, commuting on the, an airport that it would be great to be able to go and run on a treadmill and something a little bit more interactive. And you also mentioned that the initial idea was a room with pictures projected all over the walls. I mean, I don't know if you can kind of take us through the journey of that initial idea of sitting in an airport lounge to a dome now. So the idea was really... Um yeah, it born from um, the fact that when I had done indoor running, um, it seemed like treadmills were the most packed together of any any cardio equipment in a gym. And, um, and so I was sitting there in an airport um, with Time to Kill in another business lounge, surfing another Wi-Fi network, dealing with yet more email, and I thought, well, hold on. If I uh, could create a running only gym space, what would that be? What would that look like? And so I envisaged this, this, um, this space where the walls were projected image video and you would be running in these places. And um, also thought about Breeze and um, a few other things. Um, and when we looked into that, and tested it. We actually, there was a there's a room that was like a got cylinder walls, and we tested this, filmed some uh, some footage, and put some people through the test, and they loved it, absolutely loved it. But the the, the challenge for us then was how do you commercialise that? And um, you know, we, we try to create a product out of it. We try to sell the idea to gyms, but it required a big change in how they operate. Um, and so from that. We went and said, well, actually, if we could create an individual experience, what would that look like? And um, but still using sort of immersive technology. And so with the dome, um, you know, people have described it to us as, a, as a, an IMAX for a treadmill. Um, and it gives you that. So it fills your peripheral vision. Um, we're going to be adding audio, so contextual audio. So you will be hearing where you are. In future, we'll add other senses to that equation. Um, so you really will have that multi-sensory experience. And in terms of the room itself, we call it the running room. Um, it hasn't gone away. It's still on our product roadmap. Um, and we've actually had two conversations in the last two months with people who want to try and create them. So it's exciting. And the, the actual product itself, I mean, the, the, it's obviously clearly a dome, but you, you can use different treadmills, and we noticed that the three we've got here, they're actually a couple of different sizes. I mean, the... the yeah, so, so we, um, we wanted to make sure that um, we were treadmill independent. That was really, really important, that we work with uh, any treadmill, uh, commercial treadmill available. Um, and uh, you know, spent a lot of time researching all the, the commercial treadmills out there and how big they are and everything. Um, and we also want, really want to be a threat to those companies um, because we can work with them and add value to their product. So, um, so we've ended up with um, a solution where we we um, we adjust the height of our product to the treadmill that they're particularly using. So some treadmills have a higher running surface than others, um, and so we optimise our product for that. 
Um, but it's also meant that we've got a bigger market than we thought because everyone's like, what about cycling? Um, and uh, so we just have shorter legs and different footage. Um, and so now we have cycling, uh, yeah. cycling products as well. And that brings us nicely onto the footage. I mean, we've got some stunning images here. I mean, I don't know if you can just talk us through the three different films that we have. Yeah, yeah well, what we've got showing here is a, is a series called The American West. Um, and they're all in the, uh, the western states of the US. And we've got Monument Valley, um, which is where Forrest Gump famously stopped his uh, epic running. Um, and we've got uh, more of an alpine scene called Humphrey. Humphrey's Peak, and that's actually shot at nearly 9,000 feet. Although uh, when we were filming it, you could feel that, but here you can't so much. There is snow in the distance. And on the far side, I think maybe Area 51, uh, which is a sort of infamous desert area. Um, be beautiful in its own way, sort of arid beauty. But the whole, our whole kind of ethos around it was about um, amazing landscapes to really take you away from the day-to-day, -day, the, the drudge, and, and sort of open your mind up and allow yourself to get into the zone, no pun intended, um, and really just enjoy your run and feel like you're outdoors even though you, you aren't. I know you mentioned briefly uh, before that you were looking at a cycling product. I mean, how can we see the products develop over time? Um, so we see it in two ways, I guess. Uh, one is the different sports, the different activities, and the other is um, uh, how we add value to the existing film content. And that might be um, uh, you know, specialist kind of uh, races, so filming marathons and other kind of more specialist um, uh, running courses that people might want to undertake, through to adding virtual coaches and other, almost gamifying some of that content and putting challenges in there um, so people can um, race against one another for example or uh, someone was suggesting um, Chase uh, Jessica Ennis down the road uh, so we'll be piloting that um, but from a sport perspective you know cycling is you know what our company is actually called Running Unlimited um, you know we're very much passionate about running and making running really enjoyable and spreading that gospel um, but cycling is an obvious one everyone's asked for cycling and so we've created cycling footage and we're building those uh, those libraries up um, but also rowing I mean people ask for rowing uh, a lot actually um, so we've been looking we're looking at that as well um, and, and other kind of cardiovascular activity I mean, uh, cross-country skiing we've been asked about so you know the, the options are are endless but most people will either run on a treadmill or use a stationary bike and then you've got 80-90% of gym goers. Uh, so those are going to be our two core focus areas. That's great, well thanks very much for your time today and we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, great.